Hey everybody, it's Captain Scott here. I'm back. It's been years since I used to shoot in the cockpit of the, the 747 Classic. Uh, since then, I've been flew the 747-400s uh, around for several years, but didn't want to shoot any of that. My boss wasn't happy about me shooting in the cockpit. The FA loved the videos that I was shooting, but uh, you know the FA is not my boss, right? Anyhow, I'm back. I'm shooting. I'm in the 777, but it's not me technically. It's a picture of me. Here's the picture. I just ran it through an AI generator with my voice, and this is what it comes up with. So let me know if you like this or absolutely hate this. It's the only way that I can kind of have me in the cockpit. I don't want to sit on the couch at home in my uniform talking about a flight. It's just too weird. I don't wear my uniform when I'm at home. So <laughs> uh, anyhow, moving on. Here, here. Okay, so here's what happened the other day. Took off out of China, heading to Anchorage, right? Well... By the time we got over Japan, we were 12 minutes ahead of schedule and we were going to be landing in Anchorage with too much gas. The problem there is if you land with too much gas, because we had so much cargo on the airplane, plus that gas, it would have put us over the maximum weight that we can land at. And the maximum weight you can land at in this 777 is 575,000 pounds. So, continuing on, how do you solve the problem and get rid of gas when, you know, because we're landing with too much fuel? Well, you can see on this page right here, it says ZFW, that means zero fuel weight. That's the weight of the airplane plus the cargo that does not include the weight of the fuel, right? So, initially it showed us landing in... Um, Anchorage with about 3,300 pounds extra. So you can see 543.8 plus 33, that would have been about 576.8, right? Well, that's over the 575 landing weight, okay? So what do you do? How do you figure it out? Well, you do the math. It's pretty simple. You take 575,000 pounds, which is the max landing weight, minus the 5, 543.8 zero fuel weight, and that gives you down here the total. You can see I wrote it down, 31,200, 31.2. That's the maximum amount of fuel that you can land with to be within landing weight limits. If you land over max landing weight, number one, you gotta tell the boss and he's gonna like, what's your problem? Why did you do that? And so, you know, you don't wanna have that conversation with your boss, do you? So, and then the other thing too, is you have to do a, a huge inspection of the airplane because you landed it overweight. Basically, it's a structural, issue that if you land over that weight that you could do damage to the airplane not if it was a grease or landing but yeah you know if you smacked it on you know so that's the big concern there right so how do you get rid of that extra gas well there's a couple ways of doing it one is you could just continue with the flight plan you know and every every uh, couple thousand miles you're going to climb to a higher altitude which is increase which increases fuel savings right the higher you go the more fuel efficient the airplane becomes but we didn't really want to start making gas because we were going hey we have to get rid of gas so what you could do is you could fly across the ocean and make all sorts of extra gas you could have five six thousand pounds over max gross landing weight but then you got to get rid of it right so what do you how could you do that you put the landing gear down real early you put the flaps out to 20 degrees of flaps super early not when you're five miles from the runway do it when you're 40 miles from the runway and that will burn all that all that drag will burn through that fuel really quick well that's one way of doing it the other way we opted was you can increase the forward airspeed we were cruising at Mach 0.82 and we increased it uh, that was about 18 knots to Mach 0.84 that in itself will almost take care of the issue the, uh, the next thing you do is you just stay at the altitude that you're at flight level 310 so we came across the pacific at flight level 310 and you could see here problem solved by the time we got to this waypoint called pinzo you can see it right here is a picture of pinzo and let me pull out you can see kind of the where we are at it's down by shemia which is one of our etops alternates that's a whole another video right there but we we're down by shemia so we're a couple hours out you can see in the picture that see where it says pank eta and that's the estimate to Anchorage. Pank is just the ICAO identifier for Anchorage. A and C. If you bought an airline ticket, that's what it's going to show. But ICAO is Pank. 
0205 Zulu slash and then see the fuel 30.6 so we're landing with 30.6 so we're under, underneath the 31.2 uh, maximum we can land so we're landing we're, uh, we're going to be under our max landing weight and then you can see above that cruise altitude flight level three uh, flight level 310 and then at the top of the page it's Mach decimal 84 so we're cruising at Mach 0.84 right so Anyhow, that solved the problem. Um, again, you know, there's a couple different ways you can get rid of fuel when you're cruising along. And in one case, we just decided to get there a little bit faster, and uh, which is always a nice thing for a pilot, right? <laughs> it's just, you know, you're flying around the world, and yeah, it is what it is. But anyhow, um, yeah, so that's how we got rid of that fuel, and that's how we solved the problem. The whole thing was created, like I said, if I didn't mention, when we got over Japan, we were already 12 minutes ahead of schedule. After two hours of flying, we were 12 minutes ahead of schedule, and the reason for that was because unforecast winds, right? So uh, they were much higher than um, anticipated. It's interesting to note that if you, you'll see this a lot, if um, and you know the co-pilot screwed up when he did this, is you'll get in the plane, and all of a sudden you get this thing, here's a picture of it, called insufficient fuel. Yeah, what did he forget to do? Boom, he forgot to put the winds in the flight plan because we had such a great tailwind. You know, we're talking 160 knot tailwinds. Well, the fuel criteria is predicated on the, the wind, right? And you're looking at a 10 hour flight. So over a 10 hour flight without that 160 knot wind, boy, it's gonna take you not 10 hours. It's gonna take you probably 11 and a half hours. So that's gonna look, hey, the airplane's got this much fuel on it. It's 11 and a half hour flight, and it's going to tell you in the box insufficient fuel. So when you see that, you look at the FO and you're like, hey, dude, put those winds in. <laughs> so you, you see it once in a while. And, and when you when that message comes up, you look at them with the quizzical look, and then they're like, oh, yeah, oops. <laughs> so anyhow, it is what it is. That's why what's so cool about the 777, it tells you when you miss something. So it's not like the classic where, you know, you just had to remember everything. Otherwise, you'd you'd run into some problems so anyhow that's it for now uh let me know if you like this i'm i'm going to continue shooting this way anyway i mean um it's the only way that i can get this out there and not piss i don't know if the current bosses like it or not like it but you know it's a picture and if uh, they don't like a picture talking then you know you know what, what do they have to do i guess go on the internet and take every picture of every pilot ever posted down so um, yeah I don't see anything illegal about this operation at all right here I think it's a it's a cool way to do it and still have some coolness of the triple seven cockpit you know like I said I just I can't put my uniform on at the house and talk into a camera that's just too weird for me so all right uh, yeah 10 years later uh, that's about it for that in the interim the uh, story of, of what's happened with me in the last couple of years uh, I don't know if you knew that I had a website, askcaptainscott.com, maybe, who knows. But anyhow, uh, a couple years ago, I was in Hong Kong, rolled in there with uh, with plug sinuses, and when we're sick internationally, which that is considered sick, you have to call a, an, an international consortium uh, medical group, which every pilot in this world hates, and I won't say the name of them, but man, doing business with these guys, they're ridiculous. And so... Because I had a sinus problem, they said, Scott, it sounds like you have the symptoms of COVID. You have a 10-day lockdown, in-room lockdown in the hotel in uh, in Hong Kong. Man, I was, I, I mean, I was just blown away. I took a COVID test two days, two days later. Okay, no COVID, let me go. No, no, you need to still sit there for the 10 days. So it was in that 10-day period that I just decided to take control of my life away from the airline business and uh, do what I love and that's shooting flight training videos. So I, you know, uh, hired a professional web guy to make a beautiful website and then started selling my, uh, it's supplemental flight training videos for student pilots that are working on their private pilot lessons. Um, all it is is just shows how all the maneuvers are done, grass field, short field, you know, but it's, I mean, the grass is shot on grass, not on some concrete strip, you know, that's 10,000 feet long. So, uh, you know, it just has all the coolness in there. So that's, that's kind of what, um, kind of what I got into and, and it's done really well. Um, I've had, it's been open for two years. I've had people that about an 80% retention rate of people that continue to subscribe and i've emailed them and said hey you know you've been subscribing for too long you can cancel they go no man it's just so cool we just like this <laughs> so 
that kind of makes me warm and fuzzy, but, uh, but yeah, um, so I got that going on. I mean, $10.95 a month. I don't want to rip people off. There's enough crap out there that people are trying to swipe your money. But, you know, I did have to try and figure out how to pay the web guy, you know, get my five grand back for the web signing design. Um, the other thing, too, is I'm about 75% done with the private pilot written. And uh, what's, that's a completely new website. I'll, as it comes along, I'll show you a video of kind of it's different than anything else anybody else has done. And, uh, you know, hopefully there's some glue in the way that I present the material so it sticks, you know, so it's like, oh, that makes sense. Um, again, let me know if if you like this or absolutely hate it. I'm, it's a bummer if you hate it. Um, you know, I'm kind of optimistic about at least showing some cool stuff. I think uh, I'll use the talking head, but um, uh, tomorrow I'm heading off to Europe and I'll try and get some oceanic. But I don't see anything wrong with shooting video of the uh, the stuff that I'm doing oceanic I don't see how shooting a video of a display is illegal but uh, you know or again everyone else has done it but uh, yeah <laughs> all right enough of me yapping I'm glad I'm back I hope you kind of like this stuff uh, anything you want me to shoot let me know I'll do it but I will not sit in my living room and wear a uniform no way man <laughs> all right Good enough. Talk to you later. Take care. Have a great day. Tokyo, Tokyo, Scott Tenchi, or Yonde Kudasai. Tokyo Rajo, Scott Tenchi, or Yonde Mas, Rasho Kitimo Ramaska, Atashi, Demo Kaketu Kudasai. Get me, son. Scott Tenchi, or Yonde Mas. Konnichiwa, Konnichiwa.